Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel. In this video we're going to be adding our tests for the controller that we're going to create. So the aim of this video is to demonstrate how we can use mock MVC in order to test our endpoints that we have for our REST controllers. And before we start with building of our controller we are first going to extend our user service where we are going to add uh, some new method. This method will be returning us one of the users. So if we take a look at uh, our hard code users, we see that there is a user with the name uh, James Bond. So I'm going to copy that name and then we are going to filter for this user and uh, return it. Oops, I changed something. Okay, let's go back. Um, so let's, uh, let me just collapse this. So it's uh, actually, let's leave it here just make it a bit smaller. Um, let's add a new uh, new method here, not in the provider helper, but actually in the user service, which is going to be returning us a single user. So let's just do that. So here's our method. We are streaming through all of our users. Uh, then we are filtering for the one that has the name that equals James Bond. And then we are trying to find the first one. So basically it should only be one. And uh, if we don't find this user with this name, then we are just returning null. So it's actually quite simple. Then uh, let's start with creating our controller. So if you go back to our uh, main package, we're going to create a new one uh, here, going to name it something like controller. Uh, in this package, we are going to create a new class, uh, so a new Java class, and we're going to name it uh, user controller. Okay, now that we have our class, we need to um, tell Spring that this is actually a controller class. So we are going to annotate it to your notation. So here it is, we are tell telling Spring that this is REST controller and this is the endpoint on which it is available. So it's slash API slash users. If you're running this application locally, it would be something like localhost 8080 slash API slash users. Okay, great. Now let's add a new endpoint where we are going to be uh, fetching the James Bond user that we just uh, added the method for. In order to uh, fetch this user, we need to inject our user service. So let's do that really fast. We are using here field injection, but you can also use constructor injection, so it doesn't really matter. So uh, let's call it here. Okay, then we have a new endpoint. So keep in mind that this slash James is actually something that should be appended to this. So when you're actually wanting to access this endpoint, you need to have this beforehand and then this one. And this will return us one user DTO um, with the James Bond user that we are filtering for. Okay, great. Now let's uh, let's take a look at what we else we have here in this. Um, we have a method that returns a list of strings. So with all of the usernames. So let's also add an endpoint for this one. And here it is. It's actually quite simple. So we have a new get mapping uh, slash usernames, and this is returning us a list of strings um, from basically this service. So a list of strings, which would be, mean that this is a list of uh, all of the usernames. Uh, now let's collapse this. Uh, let's go to our test module. Then inside of this test module, let's create a new package. Uh, let's name it controllers. And then inside of this new controller package, uh, let's create a new Java class and let's name it something like user controller test. Okay, now we have our controller test class. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is basically same as what we did here for our uh, integration tests. Uh, we're going to copy this annotation. So this uh, Spring Boot test, just to tell the Spring, this is a test. Uh, then we are going to also add um, annotation that auto configures the mock MVC. So this is something that uh, we can add, but we can also um, do some configuration on our own, which will not be covered in this video. And here it is. The next thing that's uh, left is to actually inject the mock MVC itself. Here it is. It's actually, uh, so this mock MVC is what um, enables us to execute some REST calls. So think about it as a REST client that enables us to perform, perform some calls. So we are going to use this to uh, call our endpoints that we created in the controller class. Okay, now what's left now is to add some tests. Um, we could actually test first uh, our our endpoint where we return all of the usernames. So this one, so we're going to verify that this uh, 
endpoint returns us the usernames that you expect. So let's create a new uh, test. Okay, now we have it here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually build a request. Uh, so in order to tell it, uh, to tell Mock MVC which endpoint to access and what to expect and stuff like that. So let's build a new request and then we'll talk about it. And here it is. So this is our uh, HTTP request builder. Uh, we are here uh, telling it that this is a, a get HTTP request. So we know that because on our endpoint we have annotated with get mapping so this is a get http uh, the endpoint is slash api slash users slash usernames and this is exactly what we can see here api users usernames and now that we have our builder we're going to use the mock uh, mvc to um, basically execute this request so let's see how we can do that and it's actually quite simple. You can see that we are just using this uh, field that we have here and calling the perform method on it and passing in the builder. You can also see that this throws an exception, which we will just add to the uh, to the test. Uh, if this is this would fail and the exception would be thrown, our test would fail. We would still see it, so we don't have to catch it here. Okay. Um, now, uh, one thing that we can also do is we can. Um, we can tell the mock MVC to actually print us the results of this request, which is quite nice for debugging. So let's also add that. And then uh, let's see actually how we can do that. Here it is. We are saying perform this and then uh, print the results. So we're using this result handlers to uh, print them. And now the next thing is uh, we're going to expect some things. So we are, for example, expecting that the uh, response code for hit for this is 200 because we should not uh, have any failures so let's uh, verify that and we do that by calling and uh, expect and now we're going to use the result matters uh, to verify the status you can either provide the code directly or you can use something like is okay to verify that the response is okay now the next thing that we want to verify are the results themselves so we actually want to uh, verify that the, the values that are returned in this endpoint are the ones that we expect so um let's uh, do that really quickly and then i'll show you what exactly we did and here it is so we are uh, now expecting that the json path so we expect some json as a result but the path is directly on the root so we don't have any uh, we don't have any object, we're just returning a list here, so we don't have to do anything here. Uh, I'll show you later how you can access the specific properties on the next test. And um, here we are saying, okay, on this JSON path, there should be some value, and uh, it's uh, we're using the matchers to say that this value contains basically in any order this items. So in our case, those are the usernames. Uh, you can actually see them if you go back to the user service, user provider helper, where we have our users. Uh, you can see the usernames here. So it will be this one, this one, and this one. Um, we can uh, copy them in. So we can go to the test. We say, okay, uh, we have this uh, username, then we have this one. Uh, we can paste it basically anywhere. So it doesn't have to be in the order uh, that they are uh, specified here or in the order that they are returned because you might not know the order, but you know the items that you expect. So the order could be different. That's why we say in any order. And uh, once we have that, we can actually run our test and see how uh, it performs. Uh, as you can see, our test has failed. And uh, let's try to figure out uh, what's wrong. I already know it, but uh, let's do it together. So you can see here that um, we are um, iterating through these items. So this is something that we expect, but we have not matched this one. So for some reason, it's returning uh, James Bond. And if you actually scroll a bit up, you can see in the body that we have uh, some some different uh, some different values here and what this means is that something is wrong on our endpoint so if you go to the controller uh, you can see that we have user names and um, then we could jump to this method but you can see that it's actually user names so not username um, which actually returns as the names of the users so not actually their username it's just their name and the name is if you go back to the users the names are this one so um, we can actually just, I copied it from here. We can just uh, replace this, 
paste these ones and then if you run our test now it should pass so we are actually not returning the usernames we are returning the names of the user but the test remains the same same logic same everything it's just the different values that are returned on our endpoint if you want to you can of course change this uh, create a new uh, new method in the user service that returns the usernames and then call it here and then you would have the correcting as we did it the first time and you can see now uh, that our test passes okay and uh, now um let's do another test uh let me just copy this really quickly so we're going to duplicate this test uh we're going to uh, change this so test get uh, james bond now what we're going to do here is we're going to verify uh, or we're going to see how we can access a specific property so instead of uh, just accessing the root we're going to uh, um, see how we can ac access a specific property uh, in order to test this we need to change the endpoint so it's api users and then if you go to controller it's slash james we're going to uh, change it here then um, so everything here remains the same it's still a get request you can of course change it to different requests if you have something else there so like uh, you can even specify the http method there um, then we're going to perform this, pr provide a builder. We're again going to print the results. We're going to verify the status. We don't have to, but it's a nice thing. And now when we go to the JSON path, um, you can see that this uh, controller, you can, it, sees, it returns the user detail. The user detail, so this will be some kind of uh, an object in our JSON. You can see it has some properties. It has ID, it has a name, username, age, blah, blah. Let's verify the username. So let's copy the username from here. So that now it's not a name, it's a username. Um, then we go to the controller. And then what we say here is dot and then username. So basically we are just, uh, with dot, we are accessing it on the uh, root object. You can of course do the nested thing. So if this would be some object with an ID, you could say dot ID and so on. Now um, the value and the matchers, we are not going to use the contains in any order because we are not returning a list of values we're going to be just returning one uh, value so we're going to change this to is and then we're going to specify a single value so let's return this and uh, the username for james bond is not this it's 007 and now if you run this test uh, it should pass and as you can see the test has passed if we can scroll uh scroll a bit down we can see that uh this URL has been accessed uh, with this method. We haven't provided any parameters, no body, nothing special. And then if we scroll a bit down, we can see the response. Uh, we can see that the status is 200, uh, no error messages, blah, blah, content type. And then we can see in the body, we can see the object. And you can see that there are these properties that I was talking about. And there is the username, which we are verifying. And you can see that it passed. So this username is equal to 007. So, Actually, that would be everything for this uh, controller test. Um, this code will be available on GitHub, so you can uh, take a look at it for yourself or you can write it uh, on your own following this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions or something is unclear, please do leave a comment uh, down below in the video and I will try to get to it as fast as possible. For everything else, uh, you can access me on my email, which is available on my channel. Uh, if you have some special requests or you would just uh, like to talk about something, you have some problem or something, and maybe I can help you, uh, do let me know and I will give it my best. Then thank you and I will see you in the next video.